think we can get started now. Uh, I was supposed to be the interesting talk, but 20 minutes ago, plan A demo didn't work, plan B demo didn't work, plan C demo didn't work because of uh, poor internet connection. Um, I have to run a full, okay, I'll, I'll try to speak louder. So I, had, I have to run um, a full chain for the demos to work, so that's why I'm not sure that I can, uh, I'm, I will be able to actually show you something. Uh, so I am uh, Loredana. Uh, I uh, have been working with uh, BrainBot uh, developing MicroRadian, so I am one of the developers. Um, now, how many of you have heard about Radian Network or MicroRadian? Okay, that's good. Uh, how many of you have heard about state channels or payment channels? Okay, so both Radian Network and MicroRadian um, use payment channels as a scaling solution. Um, the difference between them is that MicroRadian um, is a framework for off-chain payment channels, but unidirectional, from many to one, um, as opposed to Radon Network, which is many to many. So uh, Radon Network is more complex in the sense that it has, uh, it needs routing, it needs uh, fees to incentivize nodes in the system so they can route payments without having to o always open channels between the sender and receiver. Uh, so that's why micro Radon is actually free, uh, offers free off-chain transactions because you open a channel and it's only you and the receiver, you sending uh, tokens to the receiver. So that doesn't cost anything. Um, MicroRadian is available now on the mainnet um, and the testnet, Robston, Ringby, and Coven. Um, the version is 0.2. Um, and it's a, another bug bounty release. So after um, we see what happens now, uh, please, if you want, look at the contracts. And um, we actually had a very successful bug bounty release uh, version 0 0.1. And we actually changed some of, uh, of the code that was, um, we didn't, we didn't find any important bugs, but it, there, they, there were some, um, some advices that we took into consideration. So please have a look. Um, as use cases, um, you can have paywalled content, so pay per use. This is um, one of the main use case, and I can actually show you a demo now, hopefully. Okay, so I have my um, MicroRadian server working here, and this is the Robston chain syncing. And we have a paywall here that uh, wants us to open a channel. We have uh, MetaMask connected, and we already have uh, 39 tokens as a deposit here. We can deposit nine tokens. This will take a bit because this is an on-chain transaction, so opening a channel happens on-chain. And we can follow the transaction. We'll have to wait a bit. Uh, we can see that the micro Raiden server already uh, received the uh, the create channel event, but we are waiting for some confirmations first. It has seen that the channel is open. We're still waiting a bit here. Okay, and now we can make our first um, off-chain micropayment. This is actually so the, the token that we use has uh, 18 decimals. So that's why it's so large here. And now we have our content. Um, if we refresh the page again, we are prompted to sign to pay another time for the resource. And this is how uh, the paywall content works. 
if we want to, we can also top up um, the channel if we, uh, when we'll remain out, out of tokens. But let's close the channel for now. This again is an off-chain transaction. So opening a channel, topping it up with tokens, closing the channel, and we have also added a withdraw function. So now the receivers can withdraw their tokens um, from the open channels. So that's why these channels will, will be long lived because the service providers can actually withdraw tokens. Yes? So while the server, the micro and server is closed, so the receiver the, or the service provider needs to keep uh, this micro and server opened. If it's closed, it cannot receive payments. It cannot receive events. So it's the, uh, the senders or the clients cannot access the resources. After you have paid for the resource. After, no, after opening the channel on chain. After opening the channel on chain, you just come back and you see your channel. It's done. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. For for example, um, even at this point, if um, we store the temporary channel data in the uh, local storage of the browser, but we can also retrieve the channels from the blockchain, because. Uh, Opening the, opening the channel, topping up, has events on chain. So we can look at those events and retrieve that channel data. And we can query, I'll, I'll get this uh, later bit when I actually explain how, how it works. Um, the receiver always has the last balance proof of, the, of uh, the client. So the client, if somehow loses the channel data, it can get even the last balance proof from, from the receiver. Uh, so this is the channel closing, and we we can see that um, the two tokens have went to the receiver, the two tokens that we have spent, and the rest have uh, come come back to to us in our account. We can forget the channel and then redo the process. Um, going back a bit. To the presentation. So one use case is the paywalled content and another one is machine-to-machine -machine services. Um, APIs for whatever you, you would think. For example, um, we have a video demo on, online and um, we have an example of querying the Ether price in US dollars and we do this constantly and we can see that um, we're sending payments, this sending new balance proof is the actual payment. And um, yes, you can look at, look at that. Uh, I also prepared um, or what, wanted to show you a more interesting demo today. I'm not sure if this will happen. Just a moment. Um, and then I'll show you the code that you need to actually do this demo because the, the nice thing is that you don't need a lot of code if you know how to control the drone. That, that was actually the harder part. Uh, so uh, up here you, uh, we have um, the micro and server for the drone. So the drone has um, an Ethereum account. And um, th there has been some a bit of activity before. I almost forgot. I have to connect to the Wi-Fi. 
of, of the drone. So we have to uh, wait a bit until, until I can see it. Um, okay. Oops. Try this another uh, again. <laughs> okay, if, if this time it doesn't work, we'll just. So the, uh, the idea is that we already have an open channel with the drone. And now these commands just um, are, are done. I mean, you, uh, you actually pay a fee for, for each command. And then you can fly the drone uh, however you want. Hopefully, next time, uh, I'll actually have a nice interface, interface for this. Yeah, these are, um, here we can see that. We are sending the requested price and then, yeah, it, it's alive. Unfor unfortunately, I didn't prepare it for this, um, for this room. Yes. Um, yeah. It would have been more interesting to actually pay for, for each request, but I have to be honest, I didn't have uh, enough time to, uh, to do it like that. And we actually have, it should have uh, made uh, some snapshots of the room. <laughs> so we can also uh, make it, um, I mean, we can, we can also pay for, uh, for, for each picture. But now for, uh, for the code. So uh, there's a lot of code here, because, but there, it's, it's, it's something else, so don't, don't worry about it. Um, this is the microradon server that was used. So we import some, um, some helper classes from the server. And then this is um, the resource for which we, we pay. And I just put in the, uh, all the commands here. So, it would have been nicer to separate the commands and do separate APIs for them. But I just wanted you to see how easy it is to actually set up a machine-to-machine -machine, uh, server and client for, um, for this type of use. And then the client... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll probably have this uh, online so you can actually look more. Um, okay, and this is this is the client. So with just two files, we we made this. Okay, yeah, I should have uh, shown you this before. Um, so we have uh, we have the repository. It's open source. Um, at Raiden Network Micro Raiden. I told you about the off-chain payments. Um, so the channel data is, um, contains the, re the receiver address and the sender's address, the block number at which the channel has been opened, and the last balance. Uh, because the, the balance is always increasing, so we, we keep the last, the last value. And the sender also, and, and the receiver keep the channel data. The receiver also uh, has the last balance proof received from the sender. This data is signed by the sender, um, and this is the actual balance proof. We use now um, sign type data as a standard, which is still in work, uh, so that's why we, we uh, are not able to actually have a stable release, because we are also waiting a bit uh, for this standard to be implemented. And the, the nice thing about it is um, you saw when we are actually signing um, the balance proof that we actually see text. 
So we can see how much, how many tokens we are paying, uh, to whom, what's the contract address, and so on. Uh, until now, this wasn't really that nice um, when when signing trans when signing uh, messages. So the sender sends all of this data to the receiver, and then he gets the resource. We also support we support the uh, ERC20 and ERC223 tokens. Up until this point, I know there are some more standards coming out. Um, why we decided for ERC223? Mainly because of uh, lower gas cost, because we only do one uh, transaction for opening and topping up channels instead of two transactions. So we only do a transfer, and this actually, uh, the same transaction opens the channel. The ERC20, you have to approve the tokens first and then uh, you can create the channel. And this is, it's the same for topping up. About closing the channels, so what, what happens? Um, the best case scenario is when the sender and the receiver actually agree um, about what amount of tokens uh, are, is owed. So the sender queries the receiver um, and sends him his, his balance proof and then the receiver signs um, the same balance. So he, the receiver sends his own signature to the sender and then the sender can close the channel uh, for both of them. And that's instantly. There are two, two more cases um, when the receiver, let's say he's not online or for whatever reason he doesn't want to sign. Uh, the sender can close the channel and then there's a challenge period in which the receiver with the last balance proof that he has stored, he can close the channel himself. Or after the challenge period has um, finished, then the sender can settle the channel himself and that transaction is also instant. Next time, um, we may have uh, maybe a demo where you can uh, play with the drone yourselves. I'm just uh, being uh, optimistic here. Um, so, yes, you can find the code and please, please uh, participate in the bug bounty. We have given tokens uh, in the previous one. That's it. Thank you.